uploads. Um, I mean, last time I just it was fine. If I have, if I think I should, I will. But it should okay, be okay. 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 So we'll we'll start this in five, four, three, two. Okay, this is the True Hoop Podcast. I'm Henry Abbott. There's David Thorpe. And this is Brittany Brown. Hi, Brittany. Hey, Henry. So last time you were here like a couple of days ago, you're filling in for Gerard, who's I think in the Caribbean. And then we got a note from a longtime listener named Mo who said they thought it was extra weird for two middle-aged white guys to have a black woman on the show who didn't talk. (laughs) If you're watching the video, the camera's on. But you're mostly audio producing. But I thought mm-hmm. this time maybe we should do a little better job introducing you. Uh, you play college basketball. I did. I played for Kentucky State um, a long time ago. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love the I love the game. I, I can't escape it. So I'm around it as much as I can be. And we met you through Jody Avergon, who's like, uh, how would you? Jody's like a kind of I would say kind of a celebrity podcast producer. Does that seem fair? <laughs> And what do you work on, Jody? <laughs> yes, former. Uh... Oh yeah, we got some cool stuff coming up. Um, some uh, stuff I can't quite talk about yet, but we're working kind of mm-hmm. in the basketball arena, the NBA arena, and um, I can't wait for you guys to see what we got cooking up. Okay. It's it's super secret, cool. Secret basketball stuff. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Brittany's here, everybody. Uh, Brittany, chime in if you want to at any time. Um, mm-hmm. And otherwise, it'll just be a bunch of white guys talking. That's, that's downsides. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, David, some time ago, I guess like two, tw- uh, 20 years ago, how long ago was 2014? 10 years ago? No, no, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 2010. Yeah. 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 So, 14 years ago, that's how old LeBron is. Um, you, He was still in Cleveland before the decision. And you were telling me that he just looked, to, you're reading his body language, which is a, like, I think most times reading body language is an absolutely crap way for anyone to learn anything, but you're good at it. I feel like David's like, David's good at reading body language. It's not so different from reading basketball movements and stuff. And you were like, he's just not happy. And of course we know what happened is he ended up leaving in free agency. Um, you have similar vibes right now watching Steph and the Warriors. Tell me what you were seeing there. Yeah. Well, just to, to, to rephrase it. Uh, I mean, I literally said to you and I called my brother Mike down in Miami I think LeBron's going to go play with Dwayne because they had just played together for Team USA, maybe the Olympics. I don't remember yeah. which one it was. And um, Dwayne Wade, one of the two or three best players on the planet, came off the bench. I think LeBron was thinking, I want to partner with that dude. I did not have any idea about Chris Bosh. And, um, and so, yeah, watching Steph Curry last night, they just got murdered by the Raptors. Gave up uh, 66 paint points. And I don't think Siakam played the fourth quarter. I'm not sure Proto played the fourth quarter. Like, it was over. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, they, it, they cut it to nine. They were down 27 and a half. They cut it to nine. The Raptors finished the third quarter well because they did not have a good third quarter. Toronto didn't. And never had to put uh, at least a couple of the starters back in. If you, uh, Scotty went back in and RJ did. RJ had, I think, 37 at least. Um, uh, murdered them in the paint. Killed Curry in the paint. I just back went back and watched it again today. A lot of their early uh, – they scored like 40 in the first quarter. Um, I, I mean – Back-to-back possessions, Scotty just abused Steph Curry in the paint uh, for buckets. And one time, Steph kind of turned around as if to say, like, does no one see what's happening here? Like, these really tall, powerful men are scoring on me. These could be these could be power forwards 15 years ago. R.J. Barrett looks like a power forward, too. Uh, he just looked really, really, like, I don't remember him ever looking like that before. Lifeless. Now, he could have been sick. Like, those all sorts of things that could be... Or he could be not physically sick, but sick of this. And they have been playing a little bit better. And I was saying to you earlier, you know, Draymond Green is their new hope. To, you know, he's a changed man coming back. I think you and I both would agree we're rooting for him. I think you and I have both been a very strong champions of his uh, a role on their championship teams. He's a plus minus monster. He was huge he was. for them. He was a plus minus monster. Was yeah. a plus minus monster. And we yeah. fell in love with him for that. But but that's not a great strategy to think he's going to be the difference in, in what their problems are. He's and, a 50th uh, percentile I mean, defender right now. He's, yeah, he's an average yeah, exactly. NBA defender right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's his superpower, right? Uh, and he's shooting threes well. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're structurally so flawed. 
And uh, but but the biggest thing was just Curry looked so defeated. Even in the first quarter, he looked defeated. And uh, they really weren't very competitive. Most of the game, you know, a good portion of the game was competitive. Uh, I just, I don't have an answer where I did for LeBron going to Miami. I don't know where Steph would go. Uh, but I, I just, it's not going to go well in Golden State, almost for sure. The, the chances are so minimal that they're going to do anything special. And so then what, right? So just put a pin in that. We're going to come back to that. But then uh, you found these Giannis quotes. Oh, uh, wow. Like, <laughs> He went eight, 16 and 25 from the field with 17 rebounds, but they um, they lost for the third time in four games. And he said, so Houston you have was to it? be better. Oh, oh, remember, no pop quizzes on the show. That's like a rule. It was Houston, <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Houston. Yeah, it was Houston. Um, Giannis said, we have to be better. We have to play better. We have to defend better. We have to trust one another better. We have to be coached better. Every single thing. Everybody has to be better. It starts from the equipment manager. He has to wash our clothes better. That's probably not going to happen, by the way. The nope. bench has to be better. The leaders of the team have to be more vocal. We have to make more shots. We have to defend better. We have to have a better strategy. We have to be better. We have four months to get better. So we'll see. Oh, what, what are you making? What do you hear in that? What do you hear? What do you take from that? Because I have my own opinion. Okay, well, I'll, I'll tell you. I still just about this thing we were talking about. In our, we have an eight a.m. Monday morning editorial meeting, and we were looking at the ratings map from Dunks and Threes, which you can kind of see. Like, uh, I wish I could show you through audio but you, it's um a map of the best offenses and defenses in the nba in, a, in an intelligent way kind of arrayed out and you can see the celtics are at the top of the pile the sixers and thunder and nuggets are kind of grouped some chunk behind there and then there's like a next tier down and with the knicks and the clippers and the pelicans and the bucks and the timberwolves and like that's not where the bucks were supposed to be right like they're spending a whole bunch of money in the small market if Giannis in his prime, they just got Dame. They're not supposed to be like seventh, eighth, ninth in line to the throne, right? Warriors are another chunk behind that. So this is why I see is just like this is where deep enough in the season that we get a sense of who's good and who's not good. And this Bucks roster construction, this new Bucks coach, whatever the thing is, I don't know who to blame, but like they wanted to be up there with the Celtics or ahead of the Celtics, right? And they're not at all, right? They're very much in the pack. They're maybe a little behind where they were a year ago. I so right. I thought that um, I feel like Adrian Griffin's being called out there because he mentions coaching twice and it's basically yeah. strategy and coaching. Uh, uh, he's a rookie coach. It's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard league and it's hard to figure stuff out. And um, I feel like he's frustrated with that because I don't think he's trashing his players who he's mostly one with and, you know, other than Dame um, and that's solvable. There's a solvable problem, but, it's just, it's hard. It's, you know, Darvin Ham is in year two and hasn't figured this out. Uh, Frank Vogel, who's, I think, well-respected as a coach, has won a championship, uh, has not figured out how to get Phoenix to do it right. Um, there's a reason why they change coaches so often in the Premier League and in European soccer. Uh, that The voice isn't working in L.A. It's not working in Milwaukee. May not be working in Golden State, by the way, as much as we think Steve Kerr is great. Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me, connected to him, that uh, he won't be there next year. That he's going to leave. We'll see. I have no idea, but um, uh, it's a mess in Milwaukee. And so you and I, you know, I, I, I wrote and we said this before the season. They should instead of trading for Dame, they should trade Giannis and just get a tons of stuff. And I, my trade partner was OKC. Um, and uh, I just think the Warriors have got to be thinking not what's best for them, what's best for Steph. He's that kind of legacy player. We've talked about this before. Because uh, this team's not going to do it. I, I, I mean, it'd be yeah. highly improbable that they're going to do anything special. This all, so to me, like this all sort of the trade deadline is next month. And yeah, one month from um, today. One month from today. And it just seems to me okay, so the Celtics have the fifth highest payroll, the 76ers have the eighth highest, the Thunder are 21st, the Nuggets are sixth. Those are the best teams in the league. Those are the, those are the people who know they're contending right now, right? Yeah. Which means the top. The four like all in win now teams with the huge salaries are not among those top contenders, right? So, and it's just amazing the amounts of money. This they're going to blow away all the records for luxury tax this year. These teams that aren't going to win the championship, right? Well, Warriors. the Clippers, the Clippers would be the one team they didn't get Harden to start. They've been much yeah. better with Harden, but still, your point is these other teams aren't going to win, and they're paying. Go ahead and tell them what they're paying. What they're going to. I mean, this is. Just I had to like 
like shake my head a little bit, like check it again and make sure that these numbers are right. These are not the salaries that they're paying. This is the luxury right. tax that these right. teams are paying. The Golden State Warriors are, this according to Sport Track, they're going to play pay $186 million in luxury tax this year. Um, in, two, in 2021, the most luxury tax that the whole league together had ever yeah. paid in one year was $160 million. So just the Warriors are going to wow. pay $186 million. Wow. Um, the Clippers are not far behind it, $142 million. The Suns, who's, who we never even mentioned among contenders anymore, uh, no. are $51 million. And the Bucks are at $57 million. So, like, these are teams that have, in most cases, given up all of their draft picks, all of their to like win now and the trade deadlines coming up and they, they have GMs who told their billionaires that this was it. We have everything we need. We've dialed it all in, right? We have the spaceship that's going to go to the moon and they're like, Meow! like a little fizzle. Maybe we can talk about the Clippers, but like, but, and then when you see Giannis going to the media and Steph looking super disgruntled, I'm like, man, this is, these are trade. You, you have to think about trades when you think about these teams. Cause it's not going to be easy to convince these billionaires to do the same thing again next year and the year after that. And like, like these are not win now teams, even though they're built to be. I, I think that's what you just said is, is really the whole thing we have to look at the, the prism that we need to look through the, the viewpoint, the viewer for, and that is, are they going to be willing to do this next year? I love that thought yeah. is, is okay. I did it your way and it cost me this amount of money, this fortune, I could buy other yeah. teams, lots of other teams, not in the NBA, but elsewhere for that money that I just spent so for, I got nothing for it. Yeah. 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 I just saw, I saw the end of Moneyball recently, like the last, you know, five minutes, six minutes when Brad Pitt's character, he's playing uh, Billy Bean, is meeting with the, uh, the guy that runs the Red Sox. And, yeah, and John Henry. Of course, yeah. it's a fictional meeting. I, it happened probably, but I don't remember how it went in the book. Um, we don't really know what was said. But he basically says, I know how much you, we, you paid for a win where you were when what we paid for a win in Boston. Like that conversation is going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly because they're, they're, paying an exor they're paying the most anyone's ever paid for a win in NBA history and maybe sports history for American sports anyway. It's really outrageous mm -hmm. what they're doing. And we didn't love Phoenix going into the season because, I mean, they'd be fine, but uh, they just have a lot of holes on their team. I thought Golden State would be much better. Wiggins is, I was so sad for him last night. I don't know what his final numbers were, but I was watching the game. He was just terrible. He just couldn't make shots. He wasn't not competing. Couldn't make shots. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of mess, but I, I think you're dead right. That's the thing is, is how do you, how does the owner tell the GM and what does the GM say? Oh, no, it'll be better next year. Like that's a hell of a pitch to make. And I don't think it's – this is somewhat predictable, right? I don't think it's yeah. coincidence that Bob Myers removed himself from the Warriors, right? And Mike Winger slipped out the back door from the Clippers too, right? Like, like they're years into these meetings where they're like, oh, when we get Clay back, like, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's like it was all wrong. Like, it was all wrong. It just wasn't – Right. Well, didn't – did, tell me if I'm wrong. Did Winger not take a GM job? Yeah, he's in Washington. Right. He's the GM of the Wizards now. So at least yeah. he has an excuse – Bob Myers, I think, uh, we have heard rumors for a long time about that, but yeah, uh, you're, you're, you got it. Like, they just, they, the, this team was not built. Uh, uh, something has failed because some of these guys shouldn't, Draymond Green shouldn't have had that much of a fall. Uh, now we'll see what happens. Draymond said he's a changed man. We've, we've all heard that before from people, not from Draymond, from people. It doesn't typically happen. We're rooting for him. I hope, I hope things are different. That doesn't help Andrew Wiggins make more shots. That they're relying on 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 the, the kid from Santa Clara, Pozniewski, and Trace Jackson David. I really like the kid from Indiana. They're both rookies, and they're good yeah. rookies, but they're rookies, not top one, number one pick or anything like that. Trace went undrafted, uh, maybe late second round. He might have got drafted late second round, but um, I stopped watching at that point. But he wasn't drafted in the first round, and you just, you're depending on those guys. It's not gonna it's not gonna go. Gary Payton's hurt again. Chris Paul is now out for I think they're saying four to six weeks. That's a that's a messy situation there. And then in kind of digging into this, uh, we were noting like another factor with the trade deadline is that all of this money that we're talking about, um, it's about half a billion dollars yeah. all the teams combined in luxury tax 
is going is is going to the well that was a question where is it going that was your question yeah. that's a good question I was, I was um, curious yeah I brazenly said that they distribute it to the other teams which is kind of true but actually then I decided to actually look up the right answer so of course I went to Larry Coon's salary cap FAQ and this is such an interesting little NBA thing okay so they're going to collect half a billion that's actually 530ish million if the number you know it could all change with trades but that's what it would slated to be now um so up to 50% of the tax money may be given to non-tax paying teams. So there's about 20 teams that won't pay in. So conceivably they will split 260, whatever million. And that's distributed to the players? No, no, no. To the owners of the 20 teams. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, any tax money not distributed to teams will be used for, quote, league purposes. In other words, at least 50% of the tax revenue will be used for league purposes each season. League purposes essentially means for any purpose the league decides, including distributing the money back to teams. Currently, 50% of the tax revenue is used as a funding source of the revenue sharing program, which is where they basically supplement small market teams. Um, and the remaining 50% is distributed to non paxing teams in equal shares. So this is like, okay. And then, then he has a little chart of how this has gone in the past. Um, so, like, in 2022, they collected, uh, then a giant record was $481 million, and they distributed $10.5 million to each of the non-taxpayer teams, and then $240 right. million went into the revenue sharing program. So, that's how it has normally worked. But how about this? This is a classic league thing. The league reserves the right to do whatever the hell it wants with that money, right? This is the when teams complain. If you get the people who will go to the Board of Governors meetings... And they complain about the league. This is what they complain about is all of the rules are whatever the league decides, right? So like people are positioning their team for years to collect this revenue. It's a giant revenue for if you're a team trying to be in the black, right? Like, um, and then they might not get it because the league might just be like, oh, we're going to use it for our new China program or whatever they want. They can use it for right. Anyone. Like, <laughs> right. So, so OKC is going to be number one in bonus wins in a sense. If you look at how much money they're spending and then you subtract whatever they get from the league and yet they're, you know, one of the better, you know, one loss teams in the league that, and that owner who's notoriously not willing to spend much money uh, yeah. is probably not going to want his team to get into the tax so he can take part of, of that revenue share of the other money. Oh, definitely. So, and someone who knows more about the cap than me should weigh in on this, but like I, the according to sport track right now, the Lakers are just like, they're just going to miss out on this. So think about yeah. this. Like LeBron's got a tiny whisper of time left in his prime. He's agitated. He we could have put him on the agitated list too, right? He like you know with um, for sure. With with yeah. that, he just said we suck right now. He had a whole speech about this. Yeah. So he's yeah. for sure going to to Genie Bus and saying we need to just spend a little more money and get some help with the deadline. And she's like, man, if we spent, I think it's like three or four million dollars less than we'd get money, or ten, twelve, whatever the number is going to be. Yeah. Back, right? Yeah. I, who wins that? Like, my guess is. And G right, that's a good question. And I'm not sure another player matters. You, they've already are. They're stacked in terms of talent. That team, it's just not working. AD is playing fantastic. If they were, if they had won ten more games this year, AD is an MVP candidate. He's incredible. LeBron's been great, not very good, great, not elite, but great. And and are they, I think they're below 500. They're out of the playing game right now. The Lakers are. They're not in the. Yeah. They're not. They're not candidates for that. So, yeah. So you've been I, a little I, bit like one. it's. You've never not been a Darvin Ham fan, and now he's really feeling the heat. When Genie Bus has to like, I don't know if you saw like Genie Bus sent no. a note to Sam, Sam Emick wrote like basically that, like, Darvin Ham wouldn't have been fired even if they had lost to the Clippers. Like, I think the tone of the article was that he's got some job security, but when they have to write that article, like you don't have job security, right? Like that's a terrible situation. Yeah. Right? Genie supporting yeah. Listen, Darwin right now, but right, not for long. And um, yeah, I'm waiting for LeBron to give the Giannis speech. We need to get better at washing yeah. clothes, and oh, but all of that's directed to something. I'm feeling they normally direct it to the boss, which they should. The coaches deserve uh, blame for a lot of that stuff. They just aren't building the right things. Guys take bad shots. They don't give effort on defense, or they don't give smart effort. They don't play smart at all, and we have what we have. You know, the better coach teams are lucky. So when we're looking at that little chart of the, yeah, um, you know, the contending teams, what what do you see? Like, 
Do you agree? I casually am saying that the Celtics, Sixers, Thunder, Nuggets look like contenders on there. Am I missing people? Yeah, I have to go back and look at it. Yeah, so like I said, um, I've been happy with the Clippers. Uh, uh, they lost, obviously, a game last night that you know I'm sure they're unhappy losing, but they're they're moving in the right direction. Um, I mean, if you look at the whole season, they're just good. They're not great. Um, they're just a little above the Pelicans, who no one sees the contender right now, but the Pelicans are playing pretty good. But yeah, I mean, to me, uh, Boston, Philly, I don't trust Minnesota uh, because as you can look on that map. You can see their bad offense, but we know their offense is bad. Um, Milwaukee, it's it's their defense that's been the problem all season, and um, it shouldn't be as much of a problem. They you know it's been a strength of theirs in the past or whatever they're doing. I've not really focused in on it too much, other than to say they're not doing well. Uh, but I think your point, and you said this last week. Um, you, you surprises don't typically come almost ever. You, you know, by January who our contenders are. That doesn't mean you can't have a team make a run like Atlanta made it to the Eastern conference finals. Uh, you, you could have some of those, but the teams that ultimately play for the final four and then obviously the championship, uh, we kind of know by January who that's going to be. Uh, he has painted an article on, on, on a few things, but trading was a big deal. There are some very good players potentially available. Uh, it's a guess if they're available or not, but we think they might be. And, um, and there's some teams that really could use some guys. In fact, I'm writing about one of them at your request this week uh, in OKC. Um, but there, there are teams, including Milwaukee, I just don't think they have any assets to get players. Uh, that's the issue. What makes OKC so intriguing is they do. So mm -hmm. they're right there with some of these other teams, but they're loaded with assets. So that's what I'm exploring this week. Uh, Phoenix doesn't really have anything. And this is why you got to have young players and develop them. Because even if you don't decide to keep them, uh, because you want to win now as opposed to waiting, waiting two or three years, you better have a guy that people value. Ooh, I want that guy. And, um, and then you can you know, get some, something forward. So some of those teams on that list don't have anything. And some, some do. And those guys have a big advantage. No one has more advantage than OKC. For sure. So these, um, all these other teams, you know, the Heat, the Lakers, the Cavaliers, the Mavericks, the Raptors, the Suns, the Warriors, the Pacers, the Hawks, like all, Nets, all of them together, they're just not winning, right? Is that without a change, without some big change? Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, big is not even the right word. You know, major right change. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, so we're kind of, we're, we're, yeah. we're exiting, yeah, yeah. we're exiting the parody, like part of the season, right? Like we don't have 10 contenders. Yeah. Like we're down to. Yeah. We think of it. Handful, right? right. Right. There's some, right. There's some teams that have moved. Like if, if, it, if there's a deal out there that I don't see great, but our championship bus got really small. Yeah. 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 Our you know what the funny small. part is to me is like the Knicks are there, right? The Knicks are in this conversation on the on the little in the advanced stats at least. But come on, they're not winning. Come on, the Knicks aren't going to well, win. Let's, we all know the Knicks I, aren't going to win. <laughs> like, no, but I I think I'm glad you mentioned the Knicks. So there's a couple yeah. factors there. Mitchell Robinson has been really terrific defensively and is not playing right now, and yet their numbers are yeah. ratings are pretty good. And yeah. I think uh, R.J. Barrett sucked for them. Like he was way worse. They were way worse when he was playing. Well, he's in Toronto yeah. now. He's had career high last night, but that wasn't happening in New York. And OG is there. And mm -hmm. so there, I, I, I'm not arguing with you. It doesn't seem likely at all that this team can win all the playoff series. They can win one. They did last year. OG, I think, is a very good fit for what they're trying to do. And I think it's addition by subtracting, getting RJ out so they can breathe even more because he's a kind of a ball-centric guy. That isn't very efficient and, and mildly productive, but not very efficient typically. So they can be a thorn in someone's side and knock someone out potentially, but I don't, I don't see them winning. The, the, uh, the only team I would say that you mentioned was Miami. I'm not counting them out. Mm -hmm. I feel like I okay. feel like uh, Jimmy Jimmy's not been playing a lot. Um, I do think there's a deal for them in place, to, even though Kyle Larry's been good, and uh, I think Spoh's amazing, and they've been pretty good despite Tyler was out for a long time. Jimmy's missed a lot of games. Bam's been very good. 
Yeah, I do think, and 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 they're depending on a rookie, but he's done pretty well at Jaime Jaquez. So again, history tells us that's the one team that's already pulled two finals appearances out of thin air. It seems, and they're better mm-hmm. now. This seems better than those teams, I think. Yeah. And what so kind of trade do you? What kind of trade should they make? I uh, I I don't trust Kyle. I think they need a better point guard. Um, I don't trust Tyler either. Not that I would necessarily trade Kyle, but you might have to. Uh, Tyus Jones, I think, would be good for them. I've not really broken it down yet. But um, I think, I mean, Tyus Jones is a good player for anyone. There'll be more than one team, I think, going after him. I don't think he'll finish the season on the Wizards. Him, Kuzma, I trust less. Uh, but someone may go after him. But uh, Tyus, I trust. I think he was a big part of very stable teams in Memphis. And um, I think he'll play better defense when he leaves Washington. Plays the right way. Good, good offensive player. Uh, doesn't, you know, he, I think four straight years led the league in assist to turnover ratio. And place like Miami that really values ball security anyway, that'd be a good fit. But Minnesota could use him too. You guys in our behind the scenes conversations, like Tyus Jones is in, is like David's top trade target, right? Like he like, like this is yeah. the guy that I you do talk about him kind of being wasted in, in Washington. Like yeah. it's a, yeah. I, I watch him too and feel like, oh, like, I don't know, Tyus, but he oh, tries to smile a lot. But I, I think, you know, he's like, what am I doing? Like, this <laughs> team is, you know, we're trying to be bad. That's not fun. Not fun to be on a, a bad team. Uh, we didn't talk about Minnesota very much. I, they have amazing defensive metrics, not amazing offensive metrics. That's why I think Tyus would be good for them. But um, then he and Mike together, Conley, would be very good. Uh, Anthony Edwards is terrific. I'm, 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 def- I'm growing to being a huge fan of his. They, but they've, you know, they're not doing as well as they were. Uh, they had a loss yesterday to a very average Mavericks team. And actually, we should talk about Dallas too, because Luka is incredible. Uh, Kyrie has his moments, but that team isn't winning a championship. I'm sorry. I don't think they're very good. Yeah. No. no. And Orlando's in that mix in the ratings. They're not, yeah. you know, but they are an interesting team to watch going forward. And they've got my, they've got my pick for coach of the year. Go on. Yeah, just to, to the way the Magic are playing uh, and defending, uh, the way Paolo's growing as a player. Uh, he's definitely a max extension guy. Everyone thought he might be, but he definitely is. And, um, yeah, just the, the the way the young guys are coming up. Uh, uh, Franz Wagner had a bad start. He's coming around. Uh, I think Javon Mosley's done a hell of a job. They have a winning record, and they're young. It's, yeah. a, it's not like they have a bunch of veterans. They're a young team. So I think Jamal has done a tremendous job. Um, okay. Who were the other candidates for Coach of the Year? Mark Dagno. Uh, he's probably going to get it because yeah. OKC has made this huge jump. So, yeah, I would. I, I think, you know, he's going to be there. Um, I think Chris Finch probably gets some votes uh, for oh. what Minnesota's done. Yeah, I don't think yeah. people expected that. I think I uh, Ty Lue probably – Who? Ime Udoka probably gets some votes. He, deservingly so. Deservingly Houston's so. Houston's a lot yeah, better, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they look like a real basketball team now. Yeah. 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 I, but I think Jamal, I, I think uh, what they've done is is the most impressive. We have a long way to go. We do. We're not even halfway to the point yet. Yeah. So teams can go yeah. and you know lose 15 to 20 and everything changes. But right now, Orlando looks legit. Like they're not a fun team to play yeah. against the way they defend and get after people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's take a little break. We'll be right back. Brittany, I think it's because you're here. I've never remembered to take the break before, but now I'm twice in a row. I'm so excited. Nice. Gerard Gerard says take a break, and then we come right back at it. He doesn't break. do that. I guess he just builds it up. I I guess I just need a little oxygen, you know? Um, Yeah. (laughs) All right. Um, Let me switch to the other little page here. Uh, Okay. So David, you want to talk about this? Like the okay, I'll count us to back in five, four, three, two. Okay, so the Celtics killed the Pacers. Did we learn anything important from that? Well, Indiana had been really rocking and rolling uh, since the in-season mm-hmm. tournament. I'm sorry, after the in-season tournament, they were not rocking and rolling, and then they got back on that rocking and rolling train and had big wins on the road, beat the Knicks at home in in Indiana. And I think it won four or five in a row and was just demolishing teams offensively. 
put up 150 the other day, I think. And um, Boston is just – and Porzingis didn't play much. He got an eye laceration. Didn't play a lot. And uh, they still waxed him. Yeah, Boston – I, just, you know, when, you, when you're when you that team, this is just going back over history, not forget about data for a minute. The, that that team is the one that keeps ending winning streaks. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of the one of the marks of when you're one of the best teams is you're just rolling in town and beating pretty much everyone you play. Boston, it's an embarrassment of riches in their starting five. Embarrassment. Uh, Derek White, it, it may be their worst starter. Or I'm sorry, Drew Holiday, you know, <laughs> worst starter. The way they defend, um, Porzingis has been really a perfect fit so far. Uh, I worry about their bench, but they seem to be doing just fine. Uh, they got a bunch of shooting, really, and guys that play hard. Uh, Tatum Tatum had a really interesting quote. Uh, may have been after that game or the game before. Um, and they play Indiana tonight in two games and three nights. You know, the NBA does that now. That'll be interesting because I think Indiana is good, legit, offensively anyway. Um Tatum said he and Joe Missoula, the head coach, watch a lot of film together. I, I can tell you from experience that not a lot of players are saying that. that I-, I have a business because of that. Um, uh, it's really – it's good to hear. I like that. Boston seems to be on a, a, just a really good emotional um, tone. They, they, the team just has a really good emotional tone. And, um, yeah, they don't seem to panic when they don't play well. They seem to be pretty humble when they do, which is not easy to do. Uh, uh, yeah, I just uh, – they are – I mean, right now they're the favorites to win everything, I think. And so the Pacers have this, like, one of the best offenses of all time, right? And so hats off to yeah. Rick Carlisle and Tyrese Halliburton and everybody for – Tyrese this. Halliburton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but uh, uh, they just do a weird thing on defense, right? They – well, I think there were some Celtics quotes after the game. I forget. Maybe Jalen Brown, but somebody was like, "Yeah, we just, you know, they, they, like we just tried to get Tyrese isolated on D because they don't help, and we could just beat him up." And that was like it was like it was like they were daring us to do that. I paraphrase terribly, but like they have this guard your yard concept. Can you tell us about the the Pacers defense and why is it so bad? Yeah. So first of all, one of the ways the team started playing better when they were struggling after the, they lost the Lakers in the finals was they moved uh, Aaron Nesmith into the starting lineup and Andrew Nemhard, um, two of their probably their two best defenders, not including Miles Turner at the rim. So definitely, definitely two best perimeter defenders. By the way, it's a short list of good defenders on that team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyrese and Ben Matherin are houses on fire defensively. Really bad. Uh, although Matherin's definitely playing better overall, not defensively, I don't think. Um, and then Nemhard had a, some back issues, so he's been out. Bruce Brown banged his knee up. He's okay on defense, and yet they were still winning games. Uh, but, yeah, they're basically they, – they, they're trying to take away your three. So they, they might be. I didn't look the last 10 days, but they were, like, leading the league in three-point defense in terms of whether it's percentages or I think maybe it's more attempts that you're giving up, but getting murdered at the rim. You know, it's, I, always, I always compare it because I'm a simple man to boxers. Uh, who choose to protect their head and give up their gut, or they, they 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 protect their gut and give up their head. You shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to defend both a little bit. Indiana has chosen to to give up their gut, the dunks and the paint shots, to protect the three. That doesn't mean they can't grow beyond. I have a feeling, and I don't know this, my guess is they're trying to figure out who do we have that can, quote-unquote, guard your yard. And we'll fail – in that experiment of who can do it. So they're part of our future because Tyrese can't or isn't anyway at all. He's brilliant offensively, not against Boston the other night, but when you've got Drew Holiday and Derek White, like you don't plan on having your career best game. I promise you. Yeah. It's not going to happen. When you play the wizards, you can, you can bang on it, but it Pacers too, but not Boston. So Tyrese struggled some, but, uh, I think that I think that's what thinking is. We've got to surround Tyrese with plus defenders in as many spots as possible, and we're trying to figure it out. They're not expecting to win anything this year. As it is, they're trying to get in the top six. It's possible that they get there. Uh, and and but I, I I don't love that. I wish they would do a little bit more uh, help and recover rather than not help or help at the last minute and give up a better give a better fight. And I I wouldn't be surprised second half of the season that they do that. They've already made the decision to bench Matherin will bring him off the bench, which is what I think his role should be anyway, as a six man scorer. 
And Nemhard's, I think, back tonight. I have no idea how much he'll play. Uh, Nesmith is a good defender. He's been uh, – he was a he was not a good player for Boston. He's been – I like him for Indiana. Um, Jairus Walker doesn't really get much run. He might start. He's an interesting prospect, but I'm not sure that was the best pick for them. But the bottom line is uh, uh, they're winning with offense only, and it's incredible until it's not. And when it's not, they're smoked because they really if aren't. If they could play defense. average defense, they're contenders. Uh, oh, right? my God. Like, They'd be like Denver last year. Yeah. 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 Denver was about I mean, average Rick for the season. Has- Rick Carlisle took a, if I'm not mistaken, those Mavericks had a lot of bad defenders, but they turned it into a championship team, right? Like, it seems like, like he's got more game than this, right? Like as a, as a maestro yes. of a defense. Yeah. And, and um, he's got a defensive, uh, Lloyd Pierce was a defense coordinator. I thought last year, maybe not, maybe no, uh, Ron Norad was, but yeah, whatever it is, it's, it, it's been bad all along. It hasn't, it's not new. And, um, I just you, the hope is, and this is just a hope because I'm, I've talked to no one about this. Is and we've talked this before. If you want to win now, then you have to have strategies that help you win now. If you're not as worried about winning now, uh, then you can employ strategies that allow you to to discern who can be part of. As we've talked about on this show a lot, who's going to be part of our team? We're contending for a title, and so one of the filters they can use for that is the ability to defend someone without needing help. Ball screens are a little like- different, obviously. It's like a big fat training camp, like a big assessment program, yeah. a big kind of like, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because to your point, which is a great point, uh, I, I argue this all the time. Just because you're not good at something doesn't mean you'll never be good at something. And so, so they first have to find out what you can and can't do. And you need a good 25, 30, 35 games, not just to learn what it is we're failing at, but also to start diagnosing the problems and creating solutions and then implementing those strategies to solve those problems. And so, so players who are struggling to defend one-on-one, let's say, and you give them good strategies to get better and they don't, well, that guy's got to be gone. That doesn't mean he can't play well for someone else. They just can't play the way we're trying to play. And so, but the guys that do start making progress with the suggestions you're making, again, if they're doing it, this isn't a great thing the NBA does typically in mass is diagnose problems and offer solutions, implement those solutions, and see those solutions executed in a way where players get better. They just don't typically do that very well. There's individual stories of greatness, but that's not common. So if indeed Indiana's trying that, they got a ton of evidence. <laughs> There's a lot of data to show what you're bad at. And, and, and I'll link right now to the Spurs, who were getting smoked out all season. But if you've watched lately, they just they lost to Cleveland in the last seconds the other night. They're more competitive. You're starting to see growth. Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell is a few months younger than uh, R.J. Barrett. They both have wow. big deals. But Devin is a, a up and coming. He's 23 years old. Like he turned 23 in the school year this year. If you were in college, like August, he turned 23. This is a young guy. And... Um, He's, he's really starting to kind of walk that path of a two-way stud. And he doesn't have to be the number one on that team. That's Victor. And Victor is growing. And that Victor's growth is helped also by these other guys, Trey Jones and Kelton Johnson. Jeremy Sochan's been okay off the ball, not a point guard. That's for sure. So, uh, I, and they can make some trades. Jetty Osmond probably gets traded. Doug McDermott probably gets traded. They're, they're helpful now because they're veterans. But you can start seeing some growth there. And uh, uh, we're, whereas Indiana, I don't know that we've seen much yet, except for the couple of guys we know that do, do play defense. Matherin is scoring more efficiently. He's definitely passing better, which was a major problem for Ben Matherin. Um, but uh, to me, he's an off-the-bench guy, which is fine. I think off-the-bench scoring is really valuable. And so the Pacers, with their, la- if they're, their ongoing defensive lab <laughs> or their learning, like I guess this feeds into the trade deadline too, right? I mean, they've been hot in the rumor mill anyway. So presumably, Rick Carlos thinking we could have a good defense soon. Or okay defense? Well, there's, how do you get better defense? You change your strategies, you get your guys to play better, or you bring in new personnel. And so yeah. Buddy Heald, I believe, is a free agent. He, he, everyone thinks he'll get traded. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some teams that really need shooting. Mm-hmm. So you, you should be able to move him. Uh, and uh, TJ McConnell doesn't always play. I think he's a... He's a good player. And they just, they've, they've got Tyrese and Nemhard backing him up. And Bruce Brown, who was the backup point guard for the world champions last year. There's three mm-hmm. dudes. So 
it makes sense. He's got one year left on his deal, I think, for nine or ten million dollars. Um, that makes some sense. Uh, uh, I don't know about Mathurin and, and Jarris Walker. Those are first round picks, lottery picks that they're probably not willing to part with. Nesmith is playing better. I would hate he is a, he's got a good contract. I think it'd be a mistake to trade him. But they're rumored to go after Siakam and OG. Well, OG is off the table now. Siakam isn't. He does that. He didn't sign an extension. He's able to eligible to be traded. So, um, yeah, Pascal, who's not the defender he used to be, still a plus defender typically, um, and and has been part of cha- a championship team and great defenses. He makes them much much better. Uh, but I don't know that Indiana is going to do that because he's a free agent. They can wait till the off season and try to get him. You know. Mm-hmm. 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 Interesting. Um, so the Lakers beat the Clippers. I know that that means a lot to the Lakers, but is it, are, are they, are they saved at all? Or do they still, as LeBron says, they suck. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting how narrative can dictate things to fans in general. Um, I don't think it does LA. The Clippers played poorly, uh, in that game. They're not, they, they've been playing well. I think the Clippers are, uh, going to be a, a, a very tough out. Staying healthy, which is a whole separate thing, but um, yeah, I trust Ty Lue. I trust uh, I trust all those the main guys, and I like their glue guys and Terrence Mann and, and Ivaka Zubac. Um, the Lakers, they should be doing this a lot. They're super talented. Austin Reeves has been a disappointment. He's playing better though. Uh, yeah, I don't. It would not surprise me at all. What are their next? They think they play Toronto tonight. Uh, tomorrow night. I think they play Toronto tomorrow night. Toronto's been playing better since the trade. Doesn't mean they'll play well the next game, but they haven't. They they they're three and one, and they lost to Sacramento in a great game. Actually, very competitive game. I could see Toronto beating LA. LA is no juggernaut. And and then we'll. I'm waiting for the LeBron to give us the Giannis gripe. I'm waiting for that, Henry. I want to hear mm-hmm. LeBron do the Giannis gripe of the long list of what we we got better at, but really targeting towards someone. Yeah, and the agency. But then clutch, what? Clutch I mean, they can't really. The team. They're not going to get a new coach midseason and take off, though, right? I mean, that's just not how the world. The, works. I don't think it'll solve the problem. No. Yeah. yeah. I, I, other than, yeah, right. Uh, we've talked about some really good players to be traded. He's one of them. LeBron. Not that I think it will. His agency runs the team. Yeah. LeBron. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think. Yeah. No. I mean, there's logic to it for sure, right? Like the Lakers could get. I for both, like, honestly, every for both parties, yeah. for both parties, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, imagine yeah. I don't know what team we could talk talk about this. I don't know what team yet, but imagine seeing LeBron win a championship for some other team. That'd be great for LeBron fans and for LeBron's family and everything else. Yeah, you know, it ain't gonna His happen nature, in LA this year. It looks like. I mean, I'm a huge LeBron fan, but he's a very controlling dude, right? And this is the reason he got yeah. control of the whole damn franchise, like. He's Literally, he'll play for the Magic now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and just like right. take over <laughs> people. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> like, right. right. That wouldn't be the team either. But yeah, I hear your point. Who would it he's, be? Just for he's a second, running the team. Who would it be? No, I don't know. It's it's a fair thing to to mm. wonder. Uh, uh, OKC. He'd be unbelievable there. But do you mm. see that happening? Oh hell no. 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 But he'd be great. He'd be great. Yeah. Be great. He doesn't mind being. He doesn't mind being the second best player to AD. He still kind of mm-hmm. controls the team. Um, he he won't be the second best player to Shea. Mm-hmm. I just don't see that happening. And Shea might be MVP. Philly. He's right there, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I don't love it, Philly. Although LeBron, I think, is shooting really well. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't. But t- this goes to your comment about uh, the trust issues. Embiid is like Embiid's a lot more like Shaq than not like Shaq. He's goofy, <laughs> and I don't. I don't yeah. care. I'm not passing any judgment. Um, yeah. he's incredible. He's the best player in the world right now. He's playing like the yeah. best player in the world. He deserves MVP if it ended today. He's just extraordinary. What he's doing is we talked about it on Thursday. It's just ridiculous. But yeah, LeBron ain't teaming up with that, I don't think. <laughs> okay. And not the Knicks either. I mean, but not the Knicks. I mean it's for agency reasons, no. right? Like, yeah, he's the that's a right. CAA team. Them. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got two yeah. agencies running east and west. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Miami. That's where he would go. Right. I thought about that, but then Jimmy Butler has got to be the three. Mm. And I don't, I don't love that defensively for them. He's better off probably the four. Um, 
But no, I thought about, yeah, I just don't see it. Yeah. It's an easy one with Miami for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, he knows all about it. Yeah. yeah. What's okay. interesting, though, is when uh, we not know about it. Normally, we don't know about trades. The, these guys, and uh, let me say this, and you can put it on social media if you want to. All these journalists who are constantly on Twitter telling you about trades, almost always, it's make-believe. Now, I don't mean they're making it up out of whole cloth. They're but as someone who is agents, on the inside, yeah. they, they, it's or they just talk to someone's brother or the yeah. or the, the seventh scout on a team who's throwing some up. And so that becomes a source and they throw it out. So just this weekend, uh, 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 Shams uh, Terania, what's his name? I don't follow these guys, so I don't know. It's, it's Shams, right? Yeah. Shams, yeah. Yeah. So he reported the Kings were, it, you know, deep discussions regarding Siakam, whatever. Well, my sources tell me that's a bunch of hooey, not even close to being accurate. And then, I don't know, a couple hours later, he wrote, oh, the Kings have pulled out. Like, no, it didn't just suddenly happen. I yeah. think that he knew going in it wasn't true. He, but he got someone telling him something. It's just they got, they can't talk. They can't analyze the game. They're not they're not basketball people that way. So this is how they do it, and they get the fans all foaming at the mouth for it. That doesn't mean the Kings can ever trade for Siakam, whatever. I'm just saying it was all made up. This happens all the time. We, we weren't hearing anything about OG or the Knicks, and that deal was probably done a year ago. Whenever they wanted to pull the trigger, they pulled the trigger for whatever reason. Because OG's agent is the son of the guy that runs, you know, Leon Rose. He runs the Knicks. Um, but you didn't hear anything about it. That's normally what happens is you keep it on radio silent. All the trades I know that are being looked at right now, you'll never hear me. You know this. I don't even tell you. This is, this is the business that these agents are in. Is they're trying mm-hmm. to do deals. The GMs are trying to do deals. And the light of day normally kills the deals. And that is not yeah. something a player wants if they want to be traded. No, it's more useful. Like, like, well, and, and we don't know these things accidentally, right? Like somebody texts right. Shams or Woj when they want. Like, so if you're right. trying to light a fire under the thunder to improve their offer for your player, then you leak that the Kings are interested, right? Like, because now you want them, because now right. the media can help, right? Now the media can make the right. thunder feel a little bit like, oh, my God, I was a bit more, right? Like, and now maybe right. people go on talk radio and say, like, oh, Sam Presti wouldn't, you know, when raises offer all right. Lot, right? But, like that's, but that's right. That, that's not the mean, truth. Right. Right. But meanwhile, the team that really is in talks is yeah. radio silent. It's, it's radio silent. Yeah. 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 Why would you tell them anything? It's like, why would anyone tell a secret of, for what their business is doing until after the fact you don't do it. Yeah. Only if you can, only if there's like a deal that needs leverage, right. You can shift the leverage a little bit with the media, right. Is the, would be the reason. You can't, right? you can, but normally you, you, it's what you said. If if you're trying to get a deal done, you might whisper someone else is involved, whatever. Yeah. But normally it's not yeah. coming from the teams. Agents also are normally people want to trash agents, but the reality is they know how to keep a secret really, really well. Because they have to. If if it, they want to get a deal done and the light of day is gonna kill the deal and their players gonna get mad, no, they're they're not they're they're revealing other stuff to make make you look over here when the work is happening over here, you know? So a long time ago, you know, I sold my website to ESPN, right? And ended up with like, it was a year of meetings and dumb stuff and just like redlining documents and stuff, right? During that year, I learned a term deal donkey. Have you ever heard this name, this term? A deal donk? Deal donkey. No. A deal donkey is a kind of lawyer. It's a, it's a pejorative term for a kind of lawyer who basically just like takes like, we have the deal points. We have bullet points of like roughly we intend to do this. And then you just have to get it into contract language that everybody signs, which involves a ton of pain in the ass back and forth, right? This is how NBA trades happen, right? Is the league is full of deal donkeys, right? These are lawyers or lawyer-ish people who have a secret project of just like, we just got like, this person got this person sign off and this person got this one. And that billionaire is probably going to agree if we do this and then we get the second round pick. And like, you know, so this is like their little baby, right? This is like, it's it's sort of, the feeling is sort of like a pregnancy to me where it's like, we just worry over this thing so much and we just hope that it can be born and thrive, right? And like, I, I feel that way. Like, this is why they don't leak it to the media, right? It's not be, yeah, they want the team to be good, but also like, this is what they do for a living. They work really hard on like this big deal, right? Like, I mean, Masai's career is like, was really made on with our Carmelo deal, right? Like, like it's his baby. This is his baby. So yeah, you don't go talk blabbing to Shams about this like delicate thing that could be ruined by 
going public, right? You just, you keep that <laughs> super tight. There, so I, I won't, I just, I'm sorry. I just can't say names, although it happened a long time ago, but most of these names are still running teams or media people now. But there was a situation where a, a team had a trade happening and at, uh, the, I was on the inside of the team. So I knew what was going on. And um, just, just as a, as a basketball friend to the people running it, Hey, what do you think of this? Well, one team was trying to dump the salary of a good player, but he was in the last year of his deal as part of the deal to this other team. And, uh, but the team that was getting this player was going to move that player to a third team, which was a rival of the team that initially employed the player. They didn't want him to have him. Mm -hmm. And one of the more famous, I won't say who it is, but one of the more famous uh, news breakers in the industry then and now got wind of it somehow and called the team that was going to be making the deal for the third, to train to the third team say, Hey, I'm running, I'm running with this. And the president of the team or the GM said, no, 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 he's not part of the deal. He's not part of the deal. Uh, trust me, he's not part of the deal. But the reason why he said it is because if the team we were getting the guy from found out, they wouldn't put him in the deal because we're yeah. sending him to one of their rivals. Yeah. Like they, they live close proximity. And, and so the guy didn't write it. The deal happened. And basically this guy threatens, there's a few of them. Like, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to, I'm going to, the next five articles are going to be negative on you because you didn't give me this scoop that I had. But the, the, the GM said to me, we needed to do this deal to save X amount of dollars. My owner was really big on that. And if I lose the deal because this guy writes it, that's on me. That's my ass could get fired. I'm not going to give him something. I have to lie. I have tried to get my deal done to your exact point. This is, we've been working on this for months yeah. to get us into the black in a sense, whatever, you know? That's why I said the, the Knicks deal with OG, that's been set for a long time. They just, whenever they had to pull the trigger, they pulled the trigger. Yeah. And done just happen fast, typically. Yeah. Yeah. We're the public, we're ancillary. Like the deal is central right. and the public is like, maybe they get used. Maybe they don't. Right. It's like, a, it's, a, right. it's a very kind of cynical, feels like succession, you know? <laughs> right. Um, all right. Really fast. Right. 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 Which is an amazing <laughs> um, <show>. Yeah. <laughs> The Suns lost to the Grizzlies without Jaw. Oh. <laughs> I watched the fourth quarter. Uh, it was bad. It was it was bad. They just, you know, Beal missed shots. KD did okay, but he missed some shots in the fourth quarter. They played no defense. Jaron Jackson Jr. looked great. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's coming. I think he's really coming again. Um, and Nurkic just can't finish at the rim. He had a big game, like. I want to say at one point 18 and 17 in the game, but he just doesn't make shots late at the rim. He's just, you know, ground grounded. <laughs> He's very gravity affected. Um, uh, I was disappointed in Beal just not being able to make shots. He's really struggling. And they had been playing better. They had won five or six going into the game, but this was a bad loss. They kind of were lifeless. Uh, uh, if you looked at the offensive rebounder numbers, I think, I think Memphis had 16 offensive boards and, and, and Phoenix had 15 or vice versa. But it seemed like in the fourth quarter, Memphis got more than half their offensive rebounds. They were just everywhere. Zaire Williams, Vince Williams, athletic dudes, just all over the place. And, um, yeah, that's a bad loss for Phoenix. Yeah. Good vol good win for Memphis, though, without, uh, without Ja, who had just beat the Lakers with Ja the game before that. Yeah. Okay, we're 53 minutes in. We're finally getting to the main thing that happened in the NBA, though, which is the Blazers beat the Nets. Yeah, I didn't watch the game, but yeah, I know you're excited about it. Why wouldn't you watch the game? It's a perfectly exciting. It was overtime. It was super exciting. No, honestly, I don't think it matters. Of course, it doesn't matter. But um, I will say um, two thoughts, though. One is um, the Blazers have these no name rookies, Tamani Kamara and Duop Reith, who are playing like above average NBA defense in the advanced stats. Like Duop Reith is actually, I mean, he's like a 28 year old rookie who's played in the G League this year. Yeah, but um, big advantage. But he has, uh, he literally has Draymond Green's exact advanced stats on both ends of the floor on dunks and threes right now. Yeah, and so yeah. I, to me, it's like I don't, I don't think we know enough to know that the Blazers are one of these teams that like can like unearth these gems or whatever. But two is better than zero, right? Um, well, a couple when guys you who can really play. Yeah, when you collectively uh, value defense and coach defense, Orlando's doing the same thing with young guys, not necessarily rookies. Although Anthony Black, I think, has a, a good number too. He has great I numbers. Looked in really a while. Does. Yeah, yeah. He, he no surprise. He can, he can really guard. He's long, smart, smart yeah. guy. I really like him. Um, 
So is every I, when you, you know, we always say if you have one star, it kind of raises the level for all the boats. In theory, in practice, it isn't always that way. But if everyone is connected defensively and all in on on the on the on the value of caring about your teammate and executing a strategy, whatever, everyone's numbers tend to go up because they're not making as many shots. It's pretty simple math. Hard to look yeah. on a defense when even if you're playing well, they just throw it to someone else and that dude scores. That's going to affect your number whether you're yeah. playing great defense or not. You know, and I give Chauncey credit. You and I talked about this. Something's happened where I think Scoot is a big part of it and DeAndre. They've got some anchors defensively to give them a belief that, hey, we can we can do this. And I do think it's a great recipe uh, going forward. Let's get defense down first and then our offense will come in, in hopes that we hope anyway. And then, you know, we talk about the trade deadline. The other thing that's on my mind from this game is uh, Malcolm Brogdon comes off the bench. Uh, I think he scored like 18 points in 21 minutes. And during those minutes, the Blazers are plus 17. This is a role, like, you know, we talk about the, the Celtics don't have a good... Yeah. Like, a lot of these teams that, that want to get a little better yeah. top could use this guy, right? Like, like it seems pretty clear he'll end up somewhere. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts about where he fits best? He, no, no, not yet. But I, other than what you said, I, I'll mirror that. Uh, he, he's on a short list. So Siakam is probably the most likely guy to be traded a, 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 in terms of rated number one. But Brogdon's high on that list. He, he definitely, it seems, it makes no sense for Portland to keep him. I don't no. think it does anyway, unless you, unless you want to hire him as an assistant coach, but he's awfully expensive to be an assistant coach for a scoop. You're, you've had him for a few months by February 8th. He, also, when they get to that point in their career, like let him go, let him go play for meaningful mm-hmm. games. He wants in, to, in I, I mean, I don't know. He seems like a great guy. He's in his prime. Yeah. He's a really good. Player. He is a great guy. He's let president. They call him the president. Somewhere. The president. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That'll be interesting to see. Um, I, we'll start looking at that when we get close to the dread deadline. Cause I think there'll be a lot of deals is uh, who is the best fit for him. I mean, we had mentioned OKC. I think they need more of a, of a scoring four than another yeah. one. Um, but uh, but it's not a stupid deal. Like, he's better than Dort. I would be interested anyway. in a Jeremy Grant. I don't know if that's anything. We can talk about that. He's got to be tr- – he's playing well. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's really He's playing good. well, isn't he? Yeah. 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 He's really good. That's you and your sales voice. But no, he is good. No, no. Honestly, I was like, when they gave him all that money, I was like, oh, no, this is just like a giant mistake. But the fact is, like, it just wasn't a giant mistake. Like, they – no, he's, he, he'll he's, get some good for he's him. Worth his contract, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. So someone should be really valuing him, yeah, uh, uh, as a ma- to make them much better. Yeah, it'll be Portland will be in nice. You know, they'll be in line. They got they like Shaden Sharp. They like Scoot. Uh, Anthony Simons went crazy the other day as a scorer. Although I think he could be traded too um, if they really want to. You know, just go young and and split up Scoot and Simons right now. Although I think they fit fine with the way Scoot's defending. So he's a good fit next to Anthony. Um, but yeah, those other guys need to be traded. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we don't do this top five thing on Mondays, do we? Or do we? Nope. Like I'm no, we're done. I don't know how it works. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Brittany, it's been a pleasure. Um, <laughs> Draw yes. back on Thursday? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Draw's back on Thursday, I believe. Right? Did we all agree on that? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Thank you, David. Thank you, Brittany. All right, guys. Stop.